How's it going, New World? Sephir here. And today I'm back to bring you a dungeon guide for the Depths. Uh, so the Depths, in my opinion, is probably the first dungeon that is a little bit tricky. Uh, it can catch people off guard, and it will basically put you in a position to where you will see some things that you have not seen in New World before. It'll start to force you to do the mechanics. It will make you be prepared, and it will sort of test your resolve or metal as a group. Uh, that's definitely uh, going to happen when you come into here. So first and foremost, make sure you grab a few quests before you come into here, make sure you have the repeatable outside. I would recommend at least level 50, or sorry, 43 to do this quest. 43 will be the minimum for it because that's when you unlock the repeatable. Uh, from the salamander outside, I believe his name is Naka Manesh. Uh, you will get a quest to get three hunks of meat in here. You will also have the main story quest for the depths from the uh, main story mission line. And there are some faction mission things that you can kind of get. Uh, so keep an eye out from those from your faction vendors. They're sometimes there, but they're sometimes also not there. And then the last quest would be a chain in Restless Shore, which you have to do all of the Restless Shore side quests in order to unlock that. Uh, so that's also something, I believe it's called Arc Deacon uh, something. Uh, something or another, right? Uh, so those would be the quests that you would have before coming in here. As you can see, we just kind of charge across the hall here and enter this first room mechanism. You need to press those two buttons on the side, and then you need to touch this orb. Once you touch this orb, then you will be able to uh, lock the center ancient artifact console in the middle. And if all four players channel, the, the door will open to a sort of mini boss. He's very easy. He literally does nothing. You can just burn him down and kill him. But there is one final secret in this room, and that is the hidden treasure chest in the tree. And I'm going to fast forward to that and show you. All right, and this is the secret treasure chest in the tree. As you can see, it is to the left of the ancient console there. You just hop up here, you do another hop, and one final leap, and then you are on the edge, and you will be able to get this supply stockpile. It can have blue gems inside of it. I've gotten purples from it. I've gotten greens and blues and potions and all kinds of uh, resources and refining materials. So make sure you pick that up as it's two seconds of your time, and you don't want to miss out on that one. Uh, after that, you pretty much just channel this centerpiece, and then you hop on into the next room and fight a very weak mini-boss, and then kind of work your way through the dungeon, so we'll go ahead and hop into the next section. Alright, and here we are after a bit of mob killing. We finally open the door to the next sort of little mini-boss. His name is Boar. He does hit pretty hard, so just be aware. As you can see, he's chunking me quite a bit here. Um, he has a stamina bar below him, as most bosses do, most mini-bosses, uh, which is that yellow bar you can see there. If you hit him with heavy attacks, you will drain his stamina bar. Skills also drain it, and once it is drained, he will enter a down state in which you can DPS him for free and get some back attack damage. If if you want and uh, that's probably the way to go to take these guys out pretty efficiently uh, so again he's nothing too much just wanted to let you be aware that you know he can come in like a wrecking ball and do some damage so just watch out for that he's also the first quest mob that drops uh, a meat for Nakamanesh quest uh, so make sure that you pick that up we've had people not pick it up and they were very sad because they forgot and they didn't get the quest so uh, make sure you look at that all right, and after a bit more killing and uh, slaying of the monsters, you will finally arrive in the teleporter room. It's very simple. You just walk up to it. It teleports you here. There is a corrupted console in the middle. This will be used for later in the dungeon after you beat the first real boss. Uh, that will give you the key to unlock that and take you up to Captain Thorpe, which is the final boss of the dungeon. Uh, so you will be coming back to this room eventually, so just wanted to point that out real fast. There's a few treasure chests hidden on the side, so make sure you keep an eye out for them they're not super hidden it's not like the tree chest where you would miss it it's just very obvious like off in a corner or something like that so make sure you pick all those up and then you will head through this teleporter to your left here once you clear out uh these monsters here uh so do keep in mind that uh this this is the teleporter that you'll be going through not the other one uh so just watch out for that and then we'll hop on over to the next part 
Okay, once you get through that teleport, you will enter the rune summoning circle, as I like to call it. Um, essentially, all this is is a sort of gauntlet. Monsters will keep spawning, and you need to eliminate them quickly. So if you're a tank, make sure you're picking up aggro on the range mobs, especially they like to set back and do a lot of damage to your healers. So make sure you try to gather them up and group them as quickly as possible so that your team can eliminate them and you guys do not get overrun. I've seen low damage groups get overrun on this section because they just can't like they just don't have the dps to kill these monsters in time and there's just too many and they can't deal with them uh so make sure you're grouping them up and playing around with them like uh you know with a little bit of caution and if you want to you can use the cubbies to kind of pull the ranged monsters as it's not a bad idea to do so uh but once you're done with that the uh door up ahead should unlock and you'll just simply channel an azoth staff and you'll be in the next section all right here we are in the next segment across the bridge you will simply fight to kill these monsters and obtain the blessing from this little orb statue there that you saw right ahead on me uh that's very easy to do and then you will turn up the corner which will connect to the another sort of mini boss like that Diablo guy. Um, the only thing I would say on him is pull him out of the hall because he has two ranged tentacles. So I'll go ahead and fast forward to kind of show you guys that um, as to how we deal with that. All right. Here is that boss. His name is Despar, and we just pulled him out of the hallway. And uh, he once again has this heavy meter. So if you spam heavy attacks onto him, uh, you should be able to uh, lower his bar and put him in the down state. And that'll be a great place to go as you'll be able to free DPS on him. He does hit quite hard, so tanks, make sure you are blocking at the time when he does his attacks. And he will kind of <laughs> chunk you for a lot of your HP. But as you can see, the room that he was in is equipped with two tentacles. So you do not want to fight him in this room as it could get really dirty really fast with those tentacles both uh, kind of hitting your ranged and a bunch of these little zombie guys. And plus the boss just going wild with his big sword, you can get into a really dicey situation. And that's not something you want to be in so that's definitely the play pull him out of the room into the small room right before and then you can deal with these after once everything is kind of you know said and done all right and here we are at the first real boss of the dungeon i believe this is the archdeacon azamella and that is the name of the quest that you would get before if you did all the quests in restless shore uh, so that will give you this one as well. Uh, it's quite simple. The boss starts in the middle. It will occasionally summon two dogs, which is best to use your AoE taunt when that happens. You want to DPS the dogs down with the boss so you maintain maximum damage because this is going to be a race against the clock. Um, as you can see, the dogs do get re-summoned, so uh, Azamela will continue to do that. Another thing to note is there is an AoE on the ground. You see that little skull and the hands popping out. It's nice to just dodge that one. I try to block it, but you cannot do so. You just take the damage anyways. There are uh, this next phase, which basically is going to summon mines, and people have to go to the platforms on the side. Make sure you send three of your damage dealers to the right platform in the first phase, and keep your healer and your tank up in in the middle because you need to dps these mines down or your entire party will take aoe damage and he'll keep ramping up these mines as long as you don't complete this objective on the side as you can see my team off on the side there they're killing two monsters and channeling some sort of thing with the azoth staff which allows them to stop this invulnerability phase and you see we did complete it there once that's done he will resummon dogs and then we will go ahead and do aoe taunt again and he kind of repeats the same thing so he'll basically summon the skull melty hand guy from the ground he will attempt to swing at you and shoot a magical bolt and then he will summon dogs so it's kind of rinse and repeat till you get to the second phase which the second phase is going to be two sides so here's the part where i would recommend that you divide up your team i would have the tank set in the middle and deal damage to the uh, spire while you send your healer and your lowest DPS to the left side and send your two best DPS to the right side. Um, so you want to get both of those things done quickly. Do keep in mind that while you are on the left and right platforms, you will be able to help kill the mines from the platform. So that's always something good to do. 
So make sure you get that sorted out. As you can see, here I am tank. Even the dog is still up. I'm easily able to kind of handle this and kill these mines. It is a good idea to kill the dogs before the phase. So just make sure you're AOEing those down properly and it won't be as bad for you. Uh, so once again, tank in the middle, just swinging away, chopping at least one of these mines. It will catch up to you, right? There'll be two mines. You're only going to be able to kill one. You can't get two. It'd be pretty hard unless someone's helping you from the outside. And then it will go to three and then four. And then that's, you know, essentially a white from there if those explode um, so it should be pretty easy other than that um, once you get to this final phase it's just dps at this point and you clean him up and uh, hope you get some purples good luck this guy always drops crap for me i hate this man he never gives me anything uh, but hopefully you have some better luck with that All right, and once you beat the deacon, you will teleport forward to this room once again, and you will have a treasure or like a little draught or something from the treasure chest next to him right after you kill him. Make sure you pick that up. As you can see, I purged the Corrupted Shine, which gets rid of the gates here. There's a little carapace in the middle. Uh, just go ahead and defeat it first because it does pulse and knock people back. Uh, so if you do that first, then you can kind of get the treasure um, after that and then teleport up to Captain Thorpe's room. There is a bear right before Captain Thorpe's room, so we'll go ahead and fast forward to him. He's just a little tiny mini boss. Actually, we don't even have to fast forward. I think we're going to teleport straight up there. Uh, so here's the bear. Um, he's pretty simple. Uh, he just has like a three hit piece combo attack and his attacks are range as all elemental bears are and once again he has the stamina bar so hitting him with the uh, heavy attack will be the way to go as you will drain his stamina and here you can see that three piece kind of slam you can easily block it and you're not going to take any damage he does have that kind of like standing up on the ground combo but uh, he's pretty easy for the most part right like he's nothing to really scratch at um, so after you do finally manage to kill him, you will enter the room with Captain Thorpe, and then we'll go ahead and go into the mechanics for him. All right, and alas, we are here. Captain Thorpe, the final boss of the dungeon. Uh, just to let you know, the previous first boss, that Arc Deacon guy, he did have a hunk of meat, I believe, so that would be the second one. I believe thir uh, Thorpe is the third one, so you should be all good after this. But generally, you start off, you want to tank this guy facing away from your group because he has wide swinging sword attacks, which will cleave. So there you can see his first move is going to be a chop and then an overhead chop, and then he goes into a few swings, and then he has this sort of like three or four piece combo that he has so his attacks are really telegraphed so just hold your guard up and wait till he's done with that full combo then you can start to hit him a bit because if you do not wait a little bit he will pop off on you like he just did there on me because uh, i mistimed it so he did quite a bit of damage getting some distance is not bad and that is his next mechanic it is a charge he will point at a person and then charge at them generally it's the tank uh, so just be aware that uh, if you do lose aggro or he chart points at someone else, that means that you you don't have uh, pressure on it, right? Like you don't have enough threat. Uh, so it should be on you for the most part. And from there, it's a series of taking his multi-hit combo and then getting a little bit of distance or using something to recover your stamina. And then you can sort of go back in and uh, kind of block most of his attacks. As you can see, he hits quite hard. I'm level 49 here. He is 46 and he's still kicking my butt, right? Like he's doing tons of damage. Uh, so, you know, again, you're going to need a tower shield on your tank. You're going to need a carnelian gem. So make sure you really know what you're doing before you kind of come in here or else it will be a massive <laughs> use of your time and you don't want to enter that like uh you know two hour struggle bus ending in the failure and not able to kill a boss uh so this is the first phase once you get him to low health he will summon some ads i recommend you all dps them down quickly as soon as the ads are out immediately he'll start pointing his hand and casting a laser if you crouch like you can see my uh, friend there going prone you can get under the laser but you can also just move behind him so that's going to be a nice thing to do that is his next ability which is an aoe around him he will periodically cast this and drive his sword into the ground so make sure you get away from him when he does this and his final move right there you can see the flame strike if you get hit by that you're going to get a nasty dot on you and you're probably going to die that dot is insane the burn damage is crazy so make sure that you uh, avoid that one for sure 
So again, the rest of this fight is going to be a little bit of rinse and repeat. He's going to add these same mechanics, and he does have one more final phase after this. So he's going to do a bit of hand laser, a bit of charge. There you can see the AoE around him again, so make sure you don't get hit like that because it will do it. There he points, and then he does the charge again. So those are kind of the telegraphs that you can see coming out from this boss. So you can kind of slowly back it up, walk it up, take your time with the mechanics. And then here we are going to enter the final phase for Captain Thorpe where he will resummon his adds and this will be it. You will now be able to burn his health after this so every damage you do does stick. So burn those down really quickly. Make sure you get aggro with your tank and point him away. And from this point on out it should be secured decently. Uh, he does, oh, I did forget about that, he does have one little move where occasionally he'll point at someone else and like try to draw them in with like force or something and then swing but that person could just simply dodge out that's not a threat thing it's just a uh it's just like a basic functionality of the boss like he'll just target an off person uh so watch out for that aoe around him again most of his attacks are pretty telegraphed so you do have to watch a little bit on some of those instances um it can be a little bit tricky in this last phase to get him to kind of like stick on to you and stay on uh, but once you do finally get him it shouldn't be too bad and then you can burn down his uh, hp bar from there and then hopefully you get some good loot captain thorpe has been a bit nicer to me um i will say he did give me the sword the tanking sword but that arc deacon boss before him man he never gives me anything um, so hopefully you guys have some good luck on this. I know there's a sweet helmet from here and a bunch of other good stuff, uh, but I hope that this guide kind of helps you uh, do this dungeon because uh, honestly, it can be hard. Um, it can definitely be hard. And as you can see, there's the last hunk of meat. There's also a treasure chest before you go, so make sure you take that on your way out. Uh, hopefully you find this helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. We also have a Discord and a Join button if you're really interested. And for more guides in the future, make sure you check it out. We will be coming back with more. We'll probably do Dynasty Shipyard after this. This is the next hard instance that will be coming up. And we will catch you in the next video, everyone. Thank you for watching.